It's another day, another set of iPhone 14 rumors, and what we're seeing is a lot more spoilers than we've had in past years. We've heard of some of the non-credible rumors like the removal of the lightning port, the shift to a notchless design, and even seen real-world renderings of how it'll compare to the iPhone 13 lineup. Of course, if there's something that you're into, use the chapters below to one of 10 headline features. So first and probably most impactful is the price of iPhone 14. It's going up. Said to be rising about 10% at least on the pro side of the lineup, this means that the iPhone 14 Pro will increase from $999 to $1099 and Pro Max from $1099 to $1199. This actually makes sense as Apple adjusts the lineup to include the iPhone 14 Max, a baseline larger screen which will now replace that $999 price point. I for one actually think this does make sense and it provides a lower barrier of entry to that larger 6.7 inch screen. You no longer need to buy that Pro Max, which is an insane price, if you want the larger screen. Second, the notch is sticking around for another year, at least on the iPhone 14. Rumors now suggest that the eye-shaped notchless hole punch design is an exclusive Pro feature. Up to you whether you actually think it's worth that starting price point of $1099. I personally think that this screen redesign, although not that massive of a change, is going to make a lot of people upgrade to the Pro series this year. Third, the rumored always-on display for iPhone 14 is officially confirmed. This based on leaks contained in Xcode 14 beta which show a lock screen animation that removes details from an on-screen widget when the iPhone is locked. This feature is said to work exactly like the watch OS that offers a simple lock screen and once woken up, comes alive to show more details and a wallpaper. So fourth, not really a feature, but fake cases are already on sale in China for iPhone 14. This does give us a really close look at the perceived design featuring a much, much larger camera bump. Again, it's not uncommon for supply chains to be given production molds to prototype accessories prior to the phone launch, which is likely what's happening here. But of course, that really does help us to get that glimpse into what this phone is actually gonna look like. Now, speaking about the design, we now have the most accurate schematics of the iPhone 14 yet. The details show the obviously larger camera bump and a slightly thicker overall body up from 7.65 millimeters up to 7.85 millimeters. Not enough to make a big difference, but just enough that your previous cases won't work with it. These schematics overall confirm a very similar design and also show the designs previously rendered, including a flat camera design and iPhone 14 style rounded buttons not coming true. By the way, let me know which of those designs you actually like more in the comments below. Sixth, Apple is said to adopt a vapor chamber thermal system into iPhone, which helps cooling for more intense processors. This will be a welcome improvement as iPhone currently gets really hot when running a lot of processes, which does impact charging speeds and performance. I mean, even some accessory makers are catching on to this and creating ventilated chargers that better cool iPhone for a more stable charge. So building something in to help cool it will go a long way for improved performance, charging speeds, and pretty much everything else. So seventh, we're getting better detail in photos with a 57% larger sensor, giving sharper photos, better low light, and a 48 megapixel camera compared to the 12 megapixel on current devices. Now, I for one really love the style of iPhone photos, even with that just being 12 megapixels, but you can't tell with all the processing they do. So bumping this up to 48 megapixels is gonna do wild things for photography on a phone. This also just makes sense given that Samsung just released the new Galaxy Fold coming in at 50 megapixels and Apple does usually follow them relatively close in terms of specs. Number eight, the front camera is also said to include improved aperture from 1.9 to 2.2. This means better low light photos, better focus, sharper bokeh overall. So really excited to see how this actually changes front camera photos. So number nine, and by the way, I've talked about this one on the channel before, so it's nothing new. Apple is said to be ditching the physical SIM with select carriers from a legitimate memo that was leaked. This isn't likely to be a global rollout this year, but it could mean the full elimination of a physical SIM in a larger push for iPhone 15. This would mean using a QR code to have an electronic SIM instead of a physical one, and would also take them one step closer to a solid portless phone, which they've been working toward. 10th, Apple is introducing 2TB storage this year. Backtracking to last year, the 1TB option was introduced with the 13 Pro Max. This was, and still is today, better for high quality recording. For reference, 60 seconds at 4K 60 frames per second is 440 megabytes. Personally, I think if they're increasing the capacity again, then we're much more likely to see 
8K recording as an option in iPhone 14. I actually hope they just shift the whole lineup up a storage class, eliminating that bottom 128 gig option from the Pro lineup altogether. That's the top 10 updates coming to iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. In terms of launch date, we're actually set to see the new iPhone unveiled earlier than usual with the leak date of Wednesday, September 7th. Historically, Apple has held their keynote in the second week of September with pre-orders the following Friday and released the next week. So this year, if keynote rumors are true, we can expect pre-orders as early as Friday, September 9th and a release date the earliest it's ever been and on par with the iPhone 7 on Friday, September 16th. Let me know what features you're most excited about for iPhone 14 in the comments down below. Personally, I'm most excited about 8K recording and the always on display. So leave your vote in the comments down below. And while you're down there, remember to hit the like button because it tells YouTube the videos like this don't suck. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.